Hello, hello! So today we're going to be looking at planning an IFR flight. So a quick disclaimer before I begin, this is just going to be a very rough and simple guide. I'm not going to be following real world procedures to the letter, but I'm going to do a little bit more than just selecting a plane, selecting a route and clicking on fly now. So this video will follow a lot of the topics I covered in my VFR planning video, so if you haven't seen that already, I'd recommend checking that out first because that explains some more of the key areas you'll need to plan for in more detail. So for this video, I'm going to imagine that I'm planning for a commercial flight in a Boeing 737, and I'll also be using a couple of online resources to cut some corners and simplify the process. So let's begin with the route first of all. I'm going to follow a real world route flown by EasyJet in the UK and that's from London Luton and fly up to Inverness. Where else would I go? So how would we plan our route? Well we could look at a map and try to plot a route manually by following airways. However there's a lot of free tools online which can calculate the route for you. So for this I simply went onto Google and typed in online flight planner and simply clicked on the first link which brought me to onlineflightplanner.org. Now I don't know if this is the best website out there, as I said it's literally the first one I clicked on. Okay so when you click onto a flight planner website you'll be presented with a page like this. So with online flight planner the first thing it asks for is desired file formats. So you can see here that you can generate flight plans in many different formats. So most of these apply to various add-on aircraft which use their own um, sort of flight plan formats. You can see we've got Airbus X, uh, Level D, uh, we've got iFly, Quality Wings. So you can generate lots of sort of flight plans for different aircraft. For default aircraft within FSX, you just want uh, .pln here, and you can also, if you want to print a copy, uh, you can also choose PDF there as well. Now next, we have lots of different boxes that we can enter in the information for our flight plan. So I'm just going to go through and start entering the information just now. So we'll be departing from Luton, which is EGDW, and select it there. And we'll go to EGPE, which is Inverness. I thought it was going to give me a box to select. Never mind. So the next box here, um, country codes are not essential, so you can leave those blank. Um, the next box here is AIRAC cycle. So AIRAC data, um, for the casual flight, you can just leave that as it is. But just to explain, AIRAC data is what is used by flight management computers. Um, AIRAC data contains information about um, airports, SIDs, STARS, you know, all manner of navigation information. Um, Add-on aircraft, you know, such as PMDG and that, do simulate the FMC or the flight management computer, but default aircraft within FSX don't. So if you're just going to be a casual user with... Um, with just a, a sta standard default plane, just leave the AIRAC cycle as it is. Next up you have the altitude range, so this is your kind of cruising, your range with that you want to cruise within. So for this flight I'm going to say that I want to cruise within or between 30,000 feet and we'll probably go up as high as 38,000 feet possibly. So we'll cruise somewhere between 30,000 and 38,000 feet. Level um, is just relates to what level of airways you want to use. So basically you've got low altitude and high altitude airways or for a commercial flight we can use both which is the kind of the default setting there. Now the aircraft, <coughs> pardon me, you can choose from a wide variety of aircraft here. Um, I'm going to be flying the default 737 in FSX which is a 737-800 variant. So I'll select that. And then lastly, you've got your fuel unit, so you can do that in pounds or in kilograms. So just leave that as pounds there. You have a couple more options uh, relating to SIDs, stars and that, but you can just usually leave those as they are. So once you're happy that all of the data is, um, is as you want it, and you've got your desired file formats, then simply click on Create Plan. And it'll take a couple of seconds, and it'll bring you to this next screen coming up. Okay, so once that's generated the flight plan, um, you'll see that it gives us five different kind of sections of information basically. So the first we have, or the first section is our nav log. So you can see it gives us details of various waypoints, uh, frequencies here, because these two are VOR stations. 
and it gives us different tracks and distances, coordinates and, and all sorts of information. So that gives us all of the details that we need for our um, for our flight plan there. And then underneath that you have the flight plan again, but it's in a sort of a text format. So you can see we start at Luton, then we fly a SID, which is unknown at the moment. And then our first waypoint will be Olney, and then we follow the T420 waypoints to Wellin, and then we go to Upper T420, and so on. Next up, we have Meta reports for our departure and destination airports. Now, next up, this, which is what I really like on this website, is that it gives us our fuel usage, or it calculates that for us automatically, so we don't need to worry about calculated fuel. You can see that it gives us. Uh, fuel usage for the flight and also reserve fuel and then it gives us our total fuel on board so I'll make an addition to that later on but um, what you want to do is just make a note of those two numbers and we'll come back to those in a minute and then finally it's a bit skew with there but finally you get a little map uh, view of your route as well so we're starting at London and you can see that we're pretty much flying north all the way up to Inverness up at the top there so once you're happy that that's all um, that's all in order. Then you can click on this button which says go to files which will bring you to this kind of page here and then you can download your uh, your flight plan files that you requested. So after downloading the flight plan you need to remember to put it in the right location so it needs to be placed inside the flight simulator x files folder which will be inside your documents folder. So I'm going to take a step away from the route for the time being and just look at a couple of other things very quickly before we come back to looking at the route in even more detail. So I'm going to look at the fuel usage first. So the website calculated that our fuel usage for the flight would be £7,249, which equates to 1 hour and 16 minutes of flying. But it also gave us a reserve fuel amount of £7,151, or 1 hour and 15 minutes of flight. So, um, what I would sometimes do is I would add in maybe another half an hour worth of fuel just to be on the absolute safe side, but I don't think I will do for this flight. Um, again, you could just you know, work it out roughly. So, about 30 minutes would be approximately another £3,000 worth of fuel. As I said, it's just a kind of a rough estimate just to give you an extra sort of safety barrier there. But I think given that the we'll have a total amount of fuel on board of two and a half hours or fourteen thousand four hundred pounds, I'm happy with that and I'm happy to take that amount of fuel onto the plane. At this point I'm also going to have a proper look at the weather. So I'm not going to worry about the complexity of the weather, so I'm not going to worry about things like winds aloft or high altitude winds. I'd recommend simply having a look at the weather for your departure and arrival airports so you can have an idea of what to expect when you start the flight. By looking at the weather in these locations you can figure out which runway will be active at both airports and begin to plan ahead for that so you can confirm things like departure and approach procedures and estimate the routes that you'll be asked to taxi. So looking at the two meta reports for the two airports on this flight. Um, down at Luton we've got the winds coming from 200 at 4 knots but then the winds are also going to be variable from 160 through to 230 so that would suggest to me that uh, planes will be taking off from runway 26 at Luton. You can see the visibility is fine but we've got some scattered clouds at 1900 feet so it's not a big problem. Up in Inverness you can see that the winds are coming from 230 at 17 knots so it's a fairly strong wind but it's going to be blowing down the length of runway 23 which suits us perfectly the visibility again is really good and we've got no clouds in Inverness so it looks like it's going to be a nice albeit windy day up there so now we know what runways are being used we can have a look at instrument procedures that can be used during the flight so we know that we're departing Luton on runway 26 and our first waypoint will be Olney. Conveniently there is a SID or a departure procedure which will take us from runway 26 up to Olney. So you could set that aside and use that if you wanted. I won't because I'm going to be flying with ATC who will give me a vector departure. They're basically going to tell me where to fly after I take off. 
Then of course you can do the same at the other end. You can look for stars and approach procedures for Inverness. Again, because I'm flying with ATC, they're going to give me a vectored approach. But I may be able to choose an alternative approach, so I'll see how that goes. So I'm not going to worry about getting any procedure charts ready for myself, but if you wanted a little more realism, you could do that. The last thing to consider is an alternative airport to land at, should there be any problem in getting to Inverness. Now, being in a jet up at a higher altitude, we have a bit more freedom to choose an alternative airport, because we have much more time to descend and fly. So generally, an alternate airport is a suitable airport within a 100 nautical mile radius of your destination. Now, there's a couple of airports dotted around the northern half of Scotland, but the most suitable alternate for Inverness would be Aberdeen on the east coast here. And in the event of a severe emergency, then you could land at one of the RAF airbases at Kinloss or Lossiemouth. When selecting an alternative airport, remember to take into consideration the length of the runway and make sure that it's long enough to support your plane. So now we should have all the essential information we need for the flight. We know the route which we'll be following by GPS, however we do have the nav log in case we need to fly the plane manually. We've also chosen our alternate destination if we cannot land at Inverness. And if we need to make an emergency landing mid-flight, well, pretty much all of England is available from 30,000 feet. We've checked the weather at Luton and Inverness, and we've planned ahead to anticipate what's going to happen at both airports. And finally, we've had our fuel calculated by that website. We've double-checked it, and we've also decided against adding in a little extra for safety. So that's a quick look at planning an IFR flight. In my next video I'm going to take this exact plan and actually fly it so you'll get to see me fly a jet for the first time. Anyway, I hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.